I'll ask you to turn, please, to John chapter 21. Now, I must admit, when I saw the schedule for the conference that Dave Fallon sent to me by email, um, I was a little concerned that I had to speak first. I said, you don't even have a chance to sit and get your soul warmed up by others or get your butterflies settled down before you get up there. But I suppose on the positive side, it means I get to enjoy the rest of the day until tonight. So we pray that God will bless what we have to look at together. John chapter 21, and we'll read please from verse 15, very familiar portion, John 21 and verse 15, when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, Feed my sheep. Over please to 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 3. 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth, a good work. Now the translation here is um, a little bit unfortunate. It carries the idea of a, a position that a person is occupying. And really the, the thought behind this verse is if a man desires the work of an overseer, he desires a noble work. Over to Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. And verse 17, Hebrews 13 and 17, Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls as they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. Then over to 1 Peter chapter 5. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 1. The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof not by constraint but willingly, not for filthy lucre but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage but being in samples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. And finally, please, in Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20 and verse 17. Now the context here is the Apostle Paul is on his uh, journey towards Jerusalem. And in verse 17 of Acts chapter 20, from Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called for the elders of the church. And then from verse 18 down, we have Paul's uh, conversation with these men. But I want to break into that at verse 28. Verse 28, he says to these elders from the church in Ephesus, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which or in the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch, and remember that by the space of three years I ceased not to warn everyone night and day with tears." And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. I have coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel. Yea, ye yourselves know that these hands have ministered unto my necessities and to them that were with me. I have showed you all things, how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak 
and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Now, I would like this after this morning to take a look at a subject that I must admit before the Lord, I tried to get away from speaking about at this conference. It was on my heart and I thought, no, I don't want to speak on that. And a couple of times, and I just couldn't get away from it, I kept coming back to it. And it is the subject of leadership in a local assembly. Now, some will immediately uh, be very uncomfortable with that and wonder, well, what are we supposed to do with that? So at the very beginning, let me put a bit of a disclaimer on what it is that I have on my heart to try to draw our attention to today. First of all, I am not up here in any way this morning to throw stones at any overseers or any assembly or anything like that. This is not at all ministry that is intended to be critical or find fault with what dear men in sincerity before God are doing or have been seeking to do during their lifetime. Secondly, I am not in any way hoping today to provide a yardstick or a club that anyone in the audience is going to take and hold it up against the overseers in your own assembly and say, there you go, they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. If that's what you take away from my message, then I will have failed miserably. What I am hoping to do today is to bring all of our perspectives back to the Word of God to look at what leadership in assemblies is supposed to be all about. What is God's pattern for leading His people? What is the teaching of the New Testament relative to the way in which the Lord Jesus Christ and the Spirit of God through the Word of God have instructed us to function as His people? I'm speaking primarily to my own generation and younger. I know there are a number, I see your faces in the audience, I know there are a number here, like myself, who into your late 30s and early 40s, you have found yourself in an assembly with responsibility. And probably very much like me, you felt totally incapable of it and not ready for it. And very often I think we... we we sort of go on through life oblivious to, to leadership and government and a pattern for it until suddenly in our generation it lands in our lap. Just by default through the passage of time, it lands in our lap. And what I would like to do today is to focus our attention on the scriptures and what they say about the way God's people were supposed to be governed as they gather together. We have read several passages, and I, I don't apologize for that, but I, I will acknowledge that it's difficult sometimes when you read a number of passages quickly at the beginning of a message for people to stay with you and pick up on what those passages have said. So maybe you'll uh, go home and look at them again in a little bit more detail. But as I speak this morning, I will be drawing from each of these passages. The first thing I want to speak about is a desire for the work of an overseer. We read in 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1, if any man desires the work of overseership, he desires a good work. Now I mentioned in the reading that that verse is often misunderstood. The King James Version of the Bible was translated by very well-intentioned people and very capable people and very godly people who did their best to bring into English what the original languages available to them conveyed. However, as with any translation, the translators themselves are imperfect and therefore some of their particular bias or some of their particular experience shines through. And that certainly is the case because in this verse there is the idea of a man desiring the office of a bishop. And the danger is that we view that within the organizational hierarchical type structures that we're comfortable functioning in. And so whether it's in a workplace, in an organization, or in a large religious organization, we have inbred into us this idea that there is a hierarchy of authority and a bishop is a title given to a person who occupies a place of authority and exercises it. That is not at all the truth that's being conveyed in 1 Timothy 3 and verse 1. The idea in 1 Timothy 3 and 1 is 